Hello everyone. In the previous video of this lecture series, we talked about duplex of a number and how it is used to calculate square of a number really quick. Today we will see how these duplexes are useful for finding square roots of a number as well. Today we will discuss three examples and these examples will be self sufficient to overcome any difficulty that you might face in using this method. Let us jump to our first example. The first example is 1156. The first step is to count the number of digits in the number. Clearly, n here is four. Since number of digits is four, which is even, our starting number will be the pair of digits on left hand side, which in our case is eleven. The next step is to find highest square number, which is less than our starting number. In our case, it comes out to be nine. This highest square is then subtracted from the starting number, and the remainder is kept in the base of the right digit. Next, we will take square root of nine, which is three. This will be the first digit of our final answer. Using this, we will find the divisor by multiplying it by two and keeping it on the left hand side. Now, our starting number has changed from eleven to being twenty-five. We will now divide the starting number by the divisor, and the quotient will be the next digit of our final answer. The remainder is again shifted to the base. of the digit on the right hand side for the next step we will find duplex of the previous digit of our final answer which is 4 duplex of 4 will be 4 square which is 16 we will then subtract this from our latest starting number which is also 16 on subtracting we will get 0 and on dividing 0 by 6 we will get our answer as 0 so 0 is the last digit of our final answer since we had a number with even number of digits we will place a decimal after n by 2 digits from the left hand side so 34 comes out to be the square root of 1156 our next example is 59049 since n equals 5 is odd our starting number will be the leftmost digit of the number we follow the same process of finding highest square subtracting it from the starting number putting the remainder in the base of the right digit taking its square root and finding divisor by multiplying it by 2 the new starting number 19 is then divided by the divisor 4 to get 4 as a quotient this is the next digit of our final answer the remainder 3 is carried to the base to get new starting number as 30 next step is again to find the duplex of the previous digit of our final answer which is 4 which gives us 16 Then we subtract this from the new starting number 30 to get 14. 14 is then divided by the divisor 4, which gives us quotient as 3. This is the next digit of our final answer. The remainder 2 is carried forward to the next digit to get 24 as our new starting number. After this, we will find duplex of the previous two digits, that is 43. Duplex of 43 will be given by 2 times 4 times 3 which gives us 24 24 is then subtracted from the starting number which is also 24 this leaves us with 0 0 is then divided by 4 to give us quotient as 0 therefore we get the next digit of our final answer to find the next digit of our final answer we will have to calculate the duplex of the last three digits that is 430 The duplex of this number will be given by 2 times 4 times 0 plus 3 square. This will give us 9. Our new starting number is also 9. Therefore, on subtracting these, we will get 0 as our answer. On dividing 0 by the divisor 4, we will again get quotient as 0, and this is the last digit of our answer. Here we will put a decimal after n plus 1 by 2 digits from left, as n equals 5 is odd. Our next example is 18769. Again, n equals 5, so our process will be similar to the previous example until we reach the third column. Here we get a negative number. In such cases, we have to reduce the previous digit of our final answer by 1. This was the main thing I wanted to point out through this example. I would like you to solve the rest of this problem by yourself as there is same problem ahead as well. I hope you understand this method and would also apply it in your maths class. This was it for this video. I will see you in the next one.